I'm really honored to introduce our next guest. Okay, you ready? Friday night, Ted Cruz spoke at the NRA convention in Houston, and like a typical Texan who's just celebrated the Second Amendment, he decided to go out for sushi, because nothing says man of the people more than sushi. And a gentleman, this gentleman, Benjamin Hernandez, walked up to Senator Ted Cruz and asked if he could uh, get his picture taken You know, I would encourage you, I gave a half hour speech today at the NRA convention, because there are actually a lot of laws that I Yeah, but can you, can you tell me, like, I have a young daughter, 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 can you tell me why it's more important, why you can't support stronger gun laws? Because I mean, the laws are the laws. Tell me about background. What about background? Sir, 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 sir. Can we do background? Sir? Is it so hard? All right, you don't want to listen to me? It is okay. No, I do. I, I, I'm just no, you actually don't. No, sir. Go ahead. So, if you look at the law, the Democrats are going to have, they want to stop the mass murder. Do you know this, this shooter waited, waited until the day he sir, was sir. 18? Sir. Why is it so hard to support the But background check wasn't stopped this year. But you know what would have? The bill you that can, I you introduced. Can make it, you sir. can make it. Stop you can make it harder for people to get guns in this country, sir. You Thank know you that. Sir. No, you know that. But sir. you stand here. Sir. You stand at the. You stand at the in our NRA convention. It is harder. It is you know harder you know when what? there are more guns to you stop gun violence. It is not ignorance. You don't know it what is, you're talking we about. We are in this country, and there are guns dinner. everywhere, and we are dying. There are guns dying. Why is it? And why did you come here sir, sir, to the you convention need to, you need to, to back take up. You blood need to money? Back up. You need why? To back up. When 19 children died, 19 children died. That's on your hands. That is on your hands. That bruise, that's on your hands. Please welcome Benjamin Hernandez. Welcome, Benjamin. Hey there. So you ran for Texas nine. Did you run against Al Green, the Democratic Senate, the congressperson for that seat? I did. This was, though, uh, a, a few years back in, in 2018, actually. I uh, had actively avoided politics until you know, 2016. And when I saw Trump and everything that he represented uh, to me, I was like, I have to get involved. And, and to that point, honestly, I was like, oh, politics, gross, Democrats, Republicans, that's not my thing. But I think that year, like many Americans, I think it was a call to action. And for me, it was like, well, what's the best way to uh, get a crash course in this thing that I've avoided all my life. And for me, that was running. And, and of course, running as an independent is a suicide mission. Um, but for me, it was, you know, how do I get involved in this space that I haven't been in? And, and I need to catch up quickly because things are happening too quickly. Um, and of course, you know, I, 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 I lost, uh, I mean, I got 4% of the vote and I'm rounding up. I think it was closer to three, but I, it somehow felt, makes me feel better to say 4%. Um, but the point is I'm, I'm actively involved in the work now. You know, I quit my job and career and have pivoted to be involved in, in, in the political space now. With Indivisible Houston. Yeah, so also with within so I'm a board member of Indivisible Houston. You know, we're a grassroots organization that we are about holding politicians and their corporate funders accountable. Um, you know, but also from my business, you know, one thing that I learned from running for office is that hey, the world, the political world is changing. And so I, I started up a company. I run now a digital advertising company that we focus on, uh, you know, working with political candidates, mostly women and people of color to get them to run for office. Because, uh, you know, running as an independent, that, that's hard. And, you know, the lack of infrastructure, what I realized is it's not only for independents, 
the lack of infrastructure is there for the candidates who aren't part of the establishment or, you know, you, you know, part of that group. So part of our mission is really to help people run for office. Right. Right. So I want to talk to you about briefly, I'm sure you're sick of talking about confronting Ted Cruz. Now it's important. We, we have to talk about these things. But here's what's so important. To, here's what's important to me. Was his wife Heidi there? She was there. Were, were his kids there? They were there. Like, yeah. Uh, I think it's important for the wife and children to, to see that. Mm -hmm. People will say to you, how dare you do that in front of his wife and kids while they're bearing 19 school children because of him. Mm. You, you weren't menacing him. You weren't threatening him. You were, he touched you. You didn't touch him. He put his arm around you. He won and he was condescending and went with you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. And that's what you say when you're just taking more money from the NRA than anybody else in Washington and can't defend it. What, here's what made me happy. Were you arrested? No, I wasn't arrested. No, no. His security guards, the people who were holding you back. Yeah, they were his security guards. Mm -hmm. They let you speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to waste that opportunity. Um, you know, I think that... Um, you know, Ted Cruz has got to be the unluckiest guy in, in the greater Houston area. You know, what I tell people, there's 6 million people here and that that guy showed up to dinner at the same place where I'm having dinner. You know, um, oh, you, you didn't plan this. This was spontaneous. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's like, yeah, let's start there. I think, no, no, no. Yeah, this wasn't planned. I mean, that's why I think like to me, it was like, I have to do this. You know, so earlier in the week, my friend, I'll, I'll get to, I'll come back to this, but earlier in the week, my friend, uh, the president and co-founder of Indivisible Houston, uh, you, you know, we're known for this kind of actions, right? So the one I'm going to describe, but uh, I'll tell you how this all came together. Um, so we, uh, he calls me Wednesday night and he says, hey, I got this idea. And I was like, all right, this is 10 o'clock and we're both busy as hell. Like we both got businesses to run. And he tells me, hey, I've got these cutouts of Ted Cruz. Let's put on them. I murdered teachers and children and take wow. them to the George R. Brown Convention wow. Center the next morning, right in front of the doors with the NRA labels. So there right. we are the next morning. We're putting them there. We take the pictures. Right. And then we push them out locally. You know, that's the kind of stuff Indivisible does. And so then on Friday, my company, you know, we volunteered to do all the live streaming services for the uh, NRA protest, right? And so I'm in this space where we just did this thing of the cutout. I'd spent all day doing the live streaming at the protest, supporting it. And I'm just trying to go to dinner, right? I go home and change. And my wife and I, you know, uh, end up going to Uptown Sushi, a place that we've been there before. We 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 like their sweet rolls and their avocado rolls. Um, so, but anyways, that's why I say like Ted Cruz has got to be the most unlucky guy because in a city of six million people, right? <laughs> you know, this guy like an activist. It's part of Indivisible. And then you show up to the same place. And to me, that's just fate. I'm like, I just like, I got to do this because our paths don't cross. And if you're going to come into the space where I'm having dinner, I'm going to let you have a piece of my mind. Right. But yeah, no, it wasn't planned. It was, that's what I'm saying. Like Ted Cruz, man, it's got to be unluckiest guy. Uh-uh. Right. You know, I, I, I don't think he's capable of shame, but I think his daughters and his... I don't know about Heidi, but yeah. his daughter should see that. They should know who their dad is, uh, you know, peacefully. He did it peacefully. You didn't address them, but they should bear witness to who their father is. It's a ground game getting uh, these assault weapons taken off the street. Mm -hmm. I get a little tired of people saying we have to get rid of the Second Amendment or get rid of Citizens United. That's what hyper-educated people who don't want to do what you do, that's what they come up with. Mm. And then they say our hands are tied. It's unoriginal thinking. We have old sclerotic leadership in the Democratic Party. Joe Biden flies home from Buffalo saying we have to do something. I just don't know what. How about you retire? What, what could the Democrats what could the president do right now? Yeah, I think we have to be, you know, and we have to be able 
to stand up and challenge the status quo. You know, people call me a hero because, you know, I, I stood up to Ted Cruz. I'm like, hero, man. I was just, I was just doing what I needed to do in the moment. And, you know, I was listening to you earlier and we have to do more of this stuff. We have to get more in people's faces. And you're right. People are like, wow, the family is there, the children there, who knows who else was there. To me, I'm like, look, listen, if you're an elected official and you're going to take these extreme and radical positions, then it goes with the territory. And I think we have to be able to, you know, bring up the courage to take on these big fights and in unconventional ways, you know, that beltway thinking and, and the way that that it's business as usual isn't going to cut it. And I think, you know, what I want people to get out of this is late. Hey, you too can confront your elected official, right? We're not talking about violence. Heck no. I'm saying get in their face and ask questions because they should be able to give us answers. And I think that's, that's what we have to be able to do more of, you know, in a, in a way it's kind of like, we have to be more ruthless, you know, on the democratic side and how we approach these problems. And I, I don't think we're ruthless enough, you know, for the, for the problems. The experts, the adults in the room who are advising Joe Biden and most of the Democratic leadership is, of course, we should take away the guns, but you have no idea how angry gun owners can get. Mm. Well, they need to know how angry ordinary law abiding Americans can get from these shootings. Uh, what is going to change? in Texas, what kind of trouble politically speaking? And I, I have no problem with making things political because not doing anything is political. Going to funerals instead of passing meaningful legislation is political. Grieving instead of action is political. What, what is the calculus now for Greg Abbott? Yeah, I mean, I think Greg Abbott has not had a, a good week, right? Uh, or a good year and a half, you know, starting with last winter when he let people freeze, right? For for with ineptitude, um, and I think that you know you see this these the the changing timeline around the police, the the events. Of, of, of the Rob Elementary, just those kinds of things and the way that he's approached it, um, you know, even having Beto O'Rourke confront him at the press conference. I mean, these are not good looks, you know, you know, even though he spoke via video at the NRA convention, these are not good things. So I, I you know, I think that the calculus for Greg Abbott is like, look, how do I get past this quickly? How do we start talking about something else? Because that's, that is in his best interest. And I think what we have to do, and what I mean we is, I don't mean just Democrats, like everybody who's fed up of this and say, wait a minute, we're not going to move past this issue because we have done nothing, just like every other one where we've done nothing, just like El Paso where we did nothing, just like Santa Fe where we did nothing. Um, and that's the kind of conversations where we need to be having and pushing um, in front of people, Texas, you know, last year, you know, and we have to remind people that last year we passed no less than 20 laws that made it easier for guns to get out there in the streets. That's like, like what kind of thinking is and that? bragging so, they bragged. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You know, we're behind, I think it was something like, you know, we're behind others in gun sales. Like what the heck is that? You know? Right. And, and, you know, it, I'll bring another dimension to this, too, is, you know, as a person of faith, like it bothers me when when there is a political party like the Republicans who talk about God and the Bible and all of that and, and life. But yet all of their actions are against life and humanity. And I think that needs to be called out because they're sitting here elevating this thing you know, that they call life and, and God in the Bible, but yet their actions are completely opposite, uh, especially when we idolize guns, like, come on, you know, we like, that's not, that's incompatible with the faith that they preach. It's interesting because uh, Texas takes a lot of ribbing on this show and rightfully so. However, <laughs> I have a very special place in my heart for Texas. I've oh yeah? Tell me about it. Well, I, Texas is another country. You're another, you're another people. Yeah, yeah. And we you, were another country, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, as bad as your leadership is, you have great people, yeah. great progressives. Yeah. And every time I go there, I find, uh. Well, you know, Ted, uh, Ted Cruz only beat Beto by something like 500,000 votes. A little less. I think it was around 300,000. Yeah. 
out of yeah. how many millions? Oh, man, I'd have to go back and check six or seven million, like something. Yeah, so it, it's, it's not like Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz speak for Texas. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is it getting bluer? I remember I Biden. So. I, I remember on election night of 2020, we thought Biden might win Texas. And then he lost by a couple hundred thousand votes, but it was still pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's getting closer. You know, I think every cycle that we go through and every cycle that we see the failure of Republican leadership in the state, I think people are fed up, right? And, and that doesn't, you know, that shouldn't put you know, leave Democrats off the hook. I think Democrats have to provide real answers and real solutions, but I think at least what people are seeing is the failure of Republican leadership and the extreme positions of Republicans in this state that is not compatible with who we are as a people, you know? Because um, when you take a step back and look at Texas as a whole, we're, we're a changing community, always changing, always evolving. And I don't think anybody should take that for granted. I think we should do what is right for people. And I think that's, I think what Democrats are trying to do and what Republicans are failing at. Henry Cuellar, the pro-life Democrat, I think he was leading Jessica Cisneros by about 100 and what, 70 votes? Where, where does yeah. this stand right yeah. now? Yeah, something like a couple hundred votes less, less than that. Um, you know, that, what, that's, what is the count? What is the latest I don't count? I do know, actually, let, let's see. But at the last I saw it, it was like 150 some odd votes. Okay. But now I'm curious because I haven't seen this recently. And does she have enough money for a recount? Does she have to pay for the recount in Texas? Man, that's a good question. I don't know. But if she needs money, I'm definitely going to be donating to that campaign to make sure she has so Do we know where that is right now? No, what? I'm trying to look here. I don't. Okay. And Beto. Yeah. There, is he the best Texas has to offer? He is problematic. I hope he wins. Yeah. But yeah, I, I hear a lot of people, you know, say that I, I'll tell you this. And to me, it's not a, you know, anything's better than that. But no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I think that, you know, I, I think that Beto has built a ground game and he's been working on it, you know, through several cycles, through the Senate campaign, through the U.S., the presidential campaign, and now through this. And I think, you know, he's got an advantage of, of putting in that hard work and building those lists and building those volunteers that I think is going to get him a lot, uh, uh, you know, a lot closer than it was last time. And that's where I'm putting my hope is, you know, because we have to, we have to get Craig Abbott out. They're just Is Dan ready. Patrick, he's the lieutenant governor, isn't he the real power in Texas, isn't the lieutenant governor more powerful than the Texas? Isn't Abbott kind of like a figurehead? Well, I would say they both they both have power. So Dan Patrick, you know, being at the head of the legislature, I think you have a lot of power there, right? And, and being there on the day-to-day -day stuff. But I think, you know, the, with the governor, you also obviously, you know, be able to sign laws, but you also control a lot of the narrative and being able to call the legislature into special session and, and dictate what they should do. I think that's a the heck of a lot of power. And so, it, you know, it's important to do a sweep of those positions. And then let's not forget Ken Paxton, right, are indicted you know, corrupt attorney general. Uh, I mean, come on, like that, you know, like how are we going to reelect somebody like that? I think we have to work hard to make sure that those three are out. Yeah. Well, we've been talking with Benjamin Hernandez from Indivisible Houston. What can we do to help? Tell us what to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people have been hitting me up, you know, like they, they want my Venmo, they want my cash. And I just tell them like, listen, if you want to support the work we're doing, you know, go to indivisiblehouston.org and support us there. Um, you know, if you're in the Houston area, or you hear us, you know, somebody who's in the Houston area and who wants to get involved in grassroots action, you know, have them hit us up on the website. There's a volunteer button there because at the end of the day, what we have to do is we have to continue to get in people's faces because the, the old civility isn't working anymore. And, and I hate that we are where we are, but I need to fight the battle that we have now. And this is the battle that we have now. If Ted Cruz isn't going to make space to listen to constituents, um, you know, heck, we were kicked out of his office in uh, 2017, you know, just trying to talk to him. And so if he's not going to take meetings, if he's not going to respond to emails or calls, you know what? If we see you in the street, we're going to corner you and ask you the questions. And it's not even hard. It's not even like we weren't doing like gotchas. I'm not, I wasn't doing a gotcha. I was like, listen, can we start somewhere basic on background checks? I mean, come on, 
you know? And so if you can't even answer that, then you, you, you have problems, right? And so that's what I want them to know. So anyways, if you want to get involved- Are you pushing, we have some questions, we have some questions from our audience. Are you pushing for buyback programs? Voluntary gun buyback programs. Yeah, I think that would be great. Buyback programs, absolutely. Let's fund them and let's get them done. I mean, if these are voluntary, then why not, right? Like, what harm is there in that? So I think so. But I think like where I where I'm trying to unmask is the entire unwillingness to do anything because you know buybacks can you know people will react to them a certain way, but we know how Americans react to universal background checks. We know that, right? The vast majority of people do. And so when you see that they don't even want to take on something like that, that has the support, then you know what they're really all about. Right. So yeah, ask me, you know, raise the minimum wage, uh, the, the, the minimum age, sorry, to buy firearms, right. And the kids. minimum wage <laughs> and the minimum wage. Raise yeah, the, exactly. That and your then. next campaign. <laughs> raise the minimum, the minimum wage and the minimum yeah. age. Texas, man, Texas. Uh, I love home, but it, we we've got a we've we've got a lot of things to do. But anyways, like a, what I'm trying to do is start. Like, where is a good ground to start? Because, like you said, like we're not getting rid of the Second Amendment. People use guns, like you know, for recreation, for work, you know. So I think that's a reality. But my gosh, do these weapons that just murdered 19 kids? Do they need to be out in the streets? And they do they need to be so easily bought? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Benjamin Hernandez. Please come back. Uh, by the way, before we go. Sure. Immigration. Yeah. Were you a dreamer? No, I was not a dreamer. I was brought uh, undocumented to this country, you know, when I was eight months old. I was lived here in Houston all my life. I didn't naturalize until I was uh, in my teens, in 98, actually. And that was a surprise to me to know that I was undocumented. When they told me, I was like, wait, wait what? This is, this is the country that I've always called home. Um, and so, you know, gosh, that's another challenge that we have to address in this country, uh, starting with dreamers, right? Who contribute so much, but then there are 11 million people that are living in the shadows. We have to do something. Yeah. And in, in we have four minutes left. Sure. What is it like to come here as a, as a child? Mm -hmm to blend in, to be what you think is an American citizen, and then wake up and discover that you're called an illegal and you have a governor who wants to deny you education. You have a governor right now in Texas who wants to uh, throw undocumented Americans out of our public schools. What does that do to a, uh, to a person? You know, even though I, um, you know, have been naturalized since 1998, um, you know, so, so so almost half of my life now, I never felt more not a part of this country until 2016. Because when I went in 2016, when I heard Trump and Republicans speaking about immigrants, I started thinking like, oh my gosh, do people look at me like I'm not a part of this country? And a thought that had never entered in my mind. And that's me, you know, who, who had a, you know, I was a, the CFO, I was a six, six figure salary, corner office, right? Great education. That was me. Can you imagine people who, you know, were undocumented and they're listening to that rhetoric and living in the shadows? My gosh, that's a terrible existence. That's inhumane, right? And all of the things that are said and all of the policies and everything, all the rhetoric behind it, that is inhumane. And is so it Christian? Me, is it Christian? It's not Christian at all. Not Christian at all. That's not what that what Jesus would be doing. You know? In Valde, Texas, mm -hmm. ICE announced a reprieve after the shooting, that they would no longer be conducting raids on the families of Evalde, Texas. Is it safe to say that many of those kids could have been undocumented? Yeah, maybe not the kids, um, but, but the families, the parents. And I just say just because of the age and, and kind of like the way things play out usually in, in immigrant families. But certainly the families and the relatives. But you know, it's conceivable that those kids uh, saw their fathers or their grandmothers sent back home, right? Yeah. By ICE. Yeah. Can you believe that? Can you believe that this country, you know, is robbing families 
of, of their children, you know, and then the leadership in the state is robbing for, for their inaction, robbing families of children. And then forget the reprieve, right? Like, great, congratulations, drop in the bucket. But then when that goes away, then just imagine the future when after this country did that to those families and, and failed those children, then one of those family members gets picked up or something gets sent back. Who are we? Who are we? You know, definitely not the Christians that, that they claim to be. Constant. It's a game of inches. You have to fight. They don't give up. Uh, we have to go, but yep. Yep. I know who Republicans are. Thank you, Benjamin Hernandez. Thank you. And how do people follow you on Twitter? Yeah, go to the Benjamin HDZ. Um, just follow me there. Fine. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Honor, honor to meet you. Thank <laughs> you.